Hello there, I am reviewing the British short hair cat after three years of having one. So this is Basil, you probably know him from the videos. Uh, Basil is three years old, he was born in March 2015 and uh, it's now August 2018. So we got him in about May 2015. Uh, we paid $1,000 for Basil plus um, shipping and um, for a cat carrier that he came with. He came from a Tasmanian breeder called Cromwell Cats, Cromwell British Shorehairs. So what do you need to know about British Shorehairs? Well, their lifespan, their median lifespan is 12 and a half years for a British Shorehair cat. Uh, they're of a stouter breed and like with dogs you'll find the stouter more sort of uh, large breeds of cat will live a little bit less so they've got more body to maintain I guess and Basil's got body don't you Basil oh yeah so um, as a kitten they come uh, as every other cat very small they don't start as giant fat kittens or anything like that um, they have um, really really uh, cute little woolly coats so you don't have quite as much thick hair on them as you do once they get to this age. Um, you notice about British short hair, the two main features are they're really cool, uh, nice bluish kind of grey colour and they're very nice orange coloured eyes, so real nice, um, sort of quite striking feature on the eyes of the British short hair. Um, and with this cat at least is the temperament, it's crazy calm, very very easy going temperament on the British short hair. So um, the coat of the British short hair is you know, moderately um, dense. So this is a sort of coat that you will have to brush and maintain and it will leave grey blue tumbleweeds all around the house. We suggest or I suggest getting a some kind of robot vacuum cleaner just to maintain it so it doesn't build up. You'll find it building up around your table legs and stuff uh, if you don't take any sort of consistent action against it. It really does sort of start to become a bit of a um, wild wild west of blue tumbleweeds in your house. Um, the overall size of a British short hair, they are one of the larger cat breeds. So Basil is a pretty large example. He's a male British and uh, he weighs 9 kilos at the moment. So 9 kilos is right at the upper healthy weight range of the British. For a male, I know he looks enormously obese but this isn't actually all fat. He's actually got quite a bit of loose skin on him still. And he's still a fairly muscular cat whilst being probably slightly overweight but not hugely. He's He's a large cat, he's long and he's broad around his chest and he is quite muscular and physically able, you would be surprised. He can still jump up to high services and chase his um, friend Lemon all around. So yes, he is a large cat and his size is large and his weight is just tipping over. So I weigh myself, I'm 91 kilos, when I jump on the scales with Basil, he is, uh, we, brought, we are both 100 kilos. And then just for reference, when I jump on the scales with Ada, uh, we're 115, so Ada is a 25 kilogram Siberian Husky versus a 9 kilogram British Shorthair Kitty. Um, the food, we give Basil the same thing every day. He eats a dry food called grain free. Uh, we found that lots of the other cereal based cat foods, the ones full of grains, give him weird poos in the um, litter tray. Uh, he came litter trained and uh, any sort of small things, I think there might have been a couple of stray weeds at the start, but they just got ironed out as he got used to the place. So yeah, the temperament of the British short hair, or of this cat anyway, is the main reason why I would really strongly recommend getting one. This is an incredibly easy going cat. So you think, uh, we've got two little kids and he absolutely loves the two little kids. He seems to have a particular affinity with our daughter. Um, you'll find him often on her bed at about bedtime, he knows when bedtime is and he'll make his way in there or he'll be waiting there for her and want to curl up with her right up in her face often on her pillow um, or he'll get in uh, our sons and give him an extra bit of cleaning after his bath or shower he likes licking their hair too so really really easy going cat that has a real sort of active interest in all of us he loves being where we are in roughly the same room and yet yeah, most cats, even for this video, you couldn't just manhandle and manage. He's actually on his tail, sort of he's on alert mode, but he's not hating this, he's not fighting me in any way. Very, very easy going cat. And that even extends to, um, with strangers, there's probably about a day or so of an adjustment period. And then even with strangers, he'll become interested and want to come and sit up next to you or sit with you. And um, just overall, is a very friendly, very sort of interested, very much a family cat. Most cats we've had in the past are sort of of that. And even his friend Lemon, who lives with us too, more, much more cat-like in that they're somewhat interested but will generally go to run away if you go to pick them up or pat them if they're not in the mood. Whereas Basil's always keen on a bit of contact. Yeah, pretty happy, happy to be here. 
Um, so yeah, we've got Cedric and Ada outside, he's really interested in them too. He loves going out and just sniffing around with them and having a quick little um, you know, little play with them. Because Basil is an entirely indoor cat and I'd recommend if you ever get a pricey or a breed specific cat, you'd want to be keeping it inside because it means you have to do less um, vaccination and less health stuff because really they're in a bubble, like they are in a microcosm. Um, you know, unless people come from other houses with weird, you know, with really sick cats. It's fun. We've never had a health issue in the three years with him and in the about five years we've had uh, lemons, so there you go. In terms of being active, he's actually a fairly active cat. Uh, once the sun goes down, he's quite nocturnal, like he runs up and down the house um, when he's not in with one of the kids. He tears up and down the hallway of sort of a long house, so you hear him all night just puttering you know, back and forward. Um, him and his platonic um, life mate Lemon chase each other around, keep each other pretty entertained and pretty exercised so uh, we've never really had the need to put a run in. If he was a really high energy cat like a Bengal or something, we'd probably need to be doing a bit more but he certainly seems happy enough just cruising around the house. So yeah, um, we think about thinking about, you know, some people say oh, I'd never spend that much money on a cat. I just figure even if Basil makes his full 12 and a half years, it might be a bit longer, might be a little bit less, you're still looking at about 100 bucks a year to have a really, really nice, proper uh, animal in your house that enjoys being there. I mean, most cats, and I mean, maybe you'll get a different personality on your British short hair, but most cats are sort of somewhat interested at best, but Basil actually seems to like being around us. Um, he's not always nagging us for food. He does things that are, um, you know, pro-human without being linked with getting food or food rewards. So just very, very um, happy to be here and we're very happy to have him. So strongly recommend a British short hair for your next cat. Um, providing you've got, you know, a bit of patience for some ha uh, hair cleanup and uh, a lot of, um, I guess, a bit of time to give them as well. Because when he hasn't been patted for a while or when he'd rather be in with one of the kids, he does seem to wander about the house crying for company. So it may be best if you're going to have a British short hair to have at least some other companion animal for him too. Okay, so that'll be the review of Basil the British Shorehair after three years. Hope you've enjoyed, and we'll see you all in the next video. <laughs> and he's done.